The gaze is something of perception and differs based on differences in that perception, but also how people interpret what they perceive. I have no doubt that you've heard of the male gaze and the female gaze when it comes to dating, culture and fashion, but have you heard of the neurodivergent gaze? The likelihood that you have is self-admittedly pretty high, considering the recent online conversations. You may have seen the Fort Spots video and maybe even Ember Green's video essay. So what is this? Is it something related to atypical eye contact? Or is it related to general differences in perception? The neurodivergent gaze is something that is born out of, well, supposedly, a neurodivergent perspective, neurodivergent perspective on people, fashion and artistic expression. But considering the breadth of what is considered to be neurodivergent, it seems pretty silly to use that terminology. So introducing the autistic versus allistic gaze. Yes, pretty much the same thing just in a more accurate packaging. And that is what we are going to be talking about today. Hello, friend, and welcome to the dark side of the autistic community. My autiverse, I'm Thomas Henley, and I'm hoping you will join me today in dissecting both the potential differences between these gazes, and of course, the legitimacy and applicability of the whole concept. The legitimacy of gazes. Let us get into the meat of it. In terms of fashion, I think the whole discussion of gazes are just as legitimate as each other. I think on the scale of legitimacy, that would be so illegitimate that it feels taking the whole concept very seriously, quite silly in a, in a sense. The female versus male gaze is an example of this silliness. I mean, to myself, as a lay individual. The male gaze is just women highlighting certain features of themselves and men ma maximizing their sort of perceived masculinity in some fashion. People really be reading into this too much for social reasoning, taking it too seriously. Like, even with the example of movies and, and television, they have a vested interest in appealing to a certain demographic, you know? Of course, an action film is going to have lots of action and conventionally very attractive people just for its own sakes. It's an action movie. I don't know if I'm barking up the wrong tree. Theoretically, and in a lot of circumstances, you could apply this autistic, holistic, or neurodivergent gaze to multiple different demographics of people. Conservatives versus liberals, straights versus LGBT. QIA+, plus, introverts versus extroverts, alternative people versus normies, business people versus creatives. In a lot of different areas, whether it's personality, dating choices, fashion or art, you can make connections and distinctions in multiple different ways. But it does not mean that those distinctions are only related to that one specific difference in someone's character. In the case of the neurodivergent gaze and fashion, I think it's cool that we've developed a somewhat subculture of fashion, and I genuinely have no hate towards it, but it's not representative of neurodivergence or even autistic people and the way that they dress. Don't get me wrong, it's representative of a certain group of neurodivergent people on specific social media platforms, and in my opinion, it is heavily intertwined with other different subcultures of fashion from other diversity spaces. But if there were going to be some differences that I could get behind, it wouldn't be as specific as colourful hair or bright colours. So here's what I think. Our first point. Take the concept of dopamine dressing or high contrast. I think due to our inherent sensory differences, there is a potential that we may gravitate towards more visually stimulating clothing, but I don't think that means that we always want to wear it. Like, I love shiny things, I love colourful lights, I like colour, I like looking at colourful flashing things, it's great. 
makes me feel very happy. But it doesn't mean that I automatically wrap myself in layers of tin foil and tie it all together with multicolored fairy lights. No, I'm a dark boy. I am an alty boy. I wear black because I prefer it. I feel like it expresses me. It does not mean I am an evil villain. Or that I'm not expressing myself properly or truly because I don't dress as a sentient rainbow. But let's talk about something which I do believe holds a fair bit of weight and something that definitely applies to me as an autistic person. And that is gravitating towards striking, sharp, unique features. Doing some digging between the connections of body dysmorphic disorder, which is not necessarily body dysmorphia as most people may think, it's more related to like the face and things like that, but also face blindness and autism. I find the concept that we are drawn to striking and unique features fairly compelling. For myself, my eyes are always drawn to people who have distinct facial features or a unique fashion style. I know other people do too, but because it's different, I feel magnetized to it in, in a sense. I experience a lot of joy and I just find that people with those striking different features are just more magnetizing, more, more attractive to me. Likewise, I feel drawn to dressing differently and adorning my body in tattoos and piercings for the same reason. It's like I conflate harsher features, sharper features with better or being more magnetic. I realize that this may come across as a little bit la da and perhaps very subjective, but I highly encourage looking into face blindness, BDD and autism. It's done a lot for me. It's really opened my eyes to different aspects of my behavior, particularly sort of how I go about life, the people that I choose to be around, the people that I find attractive. It's usually people who look fairly quite unique in different ways that I tend to gravitate towards. The third point, lack of conformity or a desire to externalize difference. Let me explain. <laughs> This feeling of lacking the desire to conform is recounted by a lot of autistic people that I've talked to. And whilst I don't think that every single NT autistic person is just a conformist by nature, my experiences do line up quite well with this concept. As a child, as a kid, I never really made or never really naturally made the connections between social related things and the things that people choose to do. I didn't understand why people mimicked each other, but later learned that it was a way for them to fit in, to blend into a group. I'm not saying that dressing goffy, dressing differently, dressing with the, the neurodivergent gaze aesthetic is like not being conformist, but personally for myself, I dress this way because I liked the look of the things. It wasn't a social related thing. There was no goffy alternative people around me that I could conform to. It took a fair while for me to grasp these complex social dynamics. And so I've always had a pretty strong and unique perspective on things such as clothing. There is also the prevalence of PDA, pathological demand avoidance or persistent drive for autonomy amongst autistic people meaning that we can find it quite difficult when people tell us what to do, make demands of us. So I imagine if we receive comments on how we dress and it's negative in nature and they tell us not to do it, I'm sure, I'm sure many Autis out there who are also PDAs will take that as a green flag to just dive headfirst into it, to go even further into a particular fashion trend. Go ham. When we lack the knowledge or don't understand the social reasoning, we tend to gravitate towards styles which match up with our interests. So introducing a new idea into the mix, a conversation into the melting pot, something that I've come up with myself, I think. Special interest dressing, of course. What exactly is that? Now, a lot of people dress in certain ways because of their interests. 
That's just what we see, particularly on Instagram. If someone's doing a certain profession, they tend to have a certain aesthetic to them. Like yoga people wearing pastel sports bras and leggings. But I think due to our autistic tendencies to obsess over things, to develop special interests and interest in subjects, we, we can feel a strong urge to mimic our favorite things too, in lots of different ways. For example, I knew a kid at school, believe he was autistic, and he really loved World War history and things related to farming. So at school, he would dress up in his school uniform, but he'd be donning like a very old fashioned sort of old looking coats and a flat cap. I've also come across people who really, really love anime and so dress quite similarly to their favorite characters. Although a lot of the time, a little bit dressed down, some people. Again, not saying that any of this is statistically backed or anything, but I, I used to find myself doing something similar and it falls in line with the concept of movie mimicry, which is a concept where we as autistic people mimic the personalities and behaviors and sort of social presentation of, of fictional characters that we particularly like. And I don't think it's too far removed from that idea of movie mimicry. So I think it's, it's a fairly solid one and I'd be interested to see if you have experienced this in your own life or seen other people do this. Externalizing feelings of difference. Yes, very, very philosophical, Thomas. What are you talking about? In similar lines to the points I made about conformity, there is another idea I want to chuck out into the mist, into the mix. When we are younger, we can often feel bad about being different to our peers. But in adulthood, and especially when we are part of the online communities, it can quickly turn into a somewhat sense of pride, in a sense. So some people like to hide their difference, but other people, they like to externalize their feelings of difference on the outside. Hence why I believe this whole sort of subculture of neurodivergent fashion has arisen. I'd say that that's probably a factor in other people's personal choices in fashion, but also myself too. I feel a lot more comfortable looking different, not only because I feel like it, it, it sort of externalizes the feelings of difference that I have inside to most people, but it also tends to hint to other people that I am different, even before interacting with me, which I find is quite useful. So we've talked a little bit about fashion. Let us talk a little bit about personality and dating. Touch on it very, very briefly. I honestly really don't care to put too much emphasis on this point because I think ascribing positive or negative traits to a certain neurotype can be a very messy and heavily subjective thing to do. Sure, we can talk generally about trends in populations, in, in groups, but we aren't putting value judgments on entire groups here. I'm not saying that particularly neurotypes are more conformist, less expressive. I just think that a lot of us are very different and it's quite difficult to tell from the outside why people do things. So I'm not assuming any intentions here. Like, I think it's silly to say that all holistics or autistics choose a particular fashion partner or set of interests for conformity or because they want attention. Like, I don't think that that should be a factor in these discussions. We literally have no idea what random people's intentions with things are, what intentions they have for certain choices that they make. For example, you know, autistic people could be doing things differently, but that could be out of wanting to conform to the autistic community or for positive attention from certain types of people. We just generally don't know. But here we go. Relationships. I think in general, we may value traits which align more similarly to our own. I know, crazy concept. <laughs> I think it's silly to think that we have a more wholesome approach to dating, as there's a lot of people who will say what they want and what they look for and what they're like. But in my experience, there really isn't 
too much difference other than perhaps looking for and valuing introversion, perhaps geeky interests, perhaps um, unique quirky personality, unique perspectives, liking low sensory environments and sharing some struggles and perceptions about social things in the world. Just real basic stuff, you know. But with changing a few things, you could make that work for neurotypicals too, depending on what group you're talking about. Also on the front of one particular group, factoring in external markers of value, like typically money, social status, housing, lifestyle. I just wouldn't say that that's something that primarily holistic people would want. I think it tightly correlates to complex differences in personality and values, which albeit may be skewed by the, the sort of experience of being autistic. But I don't think that we can say that generally we're, we're, we're people who just look for, you know, who that person is, you know, just because we're autistic. I think it, it's, it's very different person to person. So I'm not ascribing a certain, you know, one group being more wholesome and sort of looking for personality and love and the other person looking for these external value markers and such. I think it really just depends on who you're talking to. And I'm not going to bite your ear off postulating the legitimacy of judgments that we could make generally about people anymore. Like, as you know from my previous video on neurotypical hatred, if you gather more data on people, you realise that someone's brain being similar to yours in certain ways doesn't mean that they are great for you. Doesn't mean that they'll make a good friend, a good partner. Um doesn't mean that they'll share a lot of the traits that you will look for in a friend or a partner. It might just skew their traits a little more towards your own. And at the risk of spoiling the fun and evolving into a rant of the importance of not judging someone based on one aspect of their personality, why don't you subscribe if you're new here and let me know your thoughts on the neurodivergent or autistic gaze down in the comments. Does it hold legitimacy? Is it the result of skewed negative experiences with highly extroverted, holistic, autistic individuals, perhaps? I'd love to know your thoughts. It's a pretty subjective topic, and I'm sure a lot of people will have different experiences because of that subjectivity. If you would like to support me on my YouTube journey as a small creator and want to experience my reaction live streams, want to catch up on all the cool conversations that we've had, the behind the scenes moments, you can become a member for as little as one pound a month. And you also get a host of different other cool benefits. It's as low as I could put it. And it really does help me out a lot. So if you enjoy my stuff, I would, I would greatly appreciate it. Much love and remember that everyone is different. Even, even neurotypicals. Autism is part of you. It is part of your personality in some, some respects, but it's definitely not everything. You know, there's nothing wrong with it not being everything. There's nothing wrong with it being a part of you. There's nothing wrong with you feeling more comfortable with people who are similar to you. You know, I think we all look for different things. And my experience, you know, autism is, is like one part of someone. I look for other stuff that's more important. How well I connect with them, their humor, their values their interests, you know? It's nice to share some things with another person. It's nice to sort of relate to them on early life experiences, perhaps experiences in life. But it's not everything, you know? And I'd say out of, you know, looking at the broader scale, I'd say I've got a good mix of autistic and holistic people in my life. And I love them all deeply. There are some differences in the way that we communicate, but we both share a similar level of patience and understanding about those differences. And it's just great. And I wouldn't know what I would do without them. Leaving you that. Leaving you that wholesome Thomas message. Neurotypicals. No, I'm joking. We must mould the society into a, an autism box where there'll be rainbows and, and people walking about happy, stimming on the streets.